very much. Thank you all for being here. It's a great pleasure to give this talk today and more broadly to be here at the Institute among so many wonderful mathematicians. Uh, so a portion of my research program focuses on quantitative stability estimates for various functional and geometric inequalities. So today I want to sort of present the problem by way of one particular example. And so this example will be the Euclidean Sobolev inequality. So what this inequality says is that if we're given a function u that maps from n-dimensional Euclidean space to the real line, which is smooth and uh, let's say decays sufficiently at infinity, so fine, perhaps the graph looks something like this, then if we fix some number between 1 and the dimension, what the Sobolev says is that the norm of the gradient of this function in LP of Rn. So already you may hate this talk if you're a number theorist, but, but the way you should view this is uh, this is some sort of energy of this function. So, so view this as an energy. This is just some, some measure of the size of the derivative of the function. It controls up to a constant the size of this function measured in another LQ space. Okay, so this is the size. So here, um, these LP spaces uh, measure the size of the, of the function, and as you vary this value of P or Q, it emphasizes where the function is small or large. Uh, and the appropriate value that we have to put here is something that's specifically governed by the dimension and p. But so the principle here is the energy of some function controls its size. There's an equivalent perspective we can take, which is uh, from the variational sides of things. Uh, so let me go ahead and call the Sobolev inequality star. And so an equivalent way to view this is the following. We can view this as taking a minimization problem. So I'll take the infimum, or after the fact, we'll actually be able to say this is a minimum of the quantity, which is just this energy, the gradient of u in LP, divided by the size of the function, this norm in LQ of Rn. So here we should view this as just some normalized energy. And I want to minimize this among all functions which are smooth and that decay at infinity. So already, so fine, I'm minimizing some number. So, so this infimum is tautologically just equal to some constant. And what the meat of the Sobolev inequality says is this constant is positive. This, this infimum value is something positive. Therefore, this inequality says something, which it would not if this constant were equal to zero. But so sort of tautologically, if I define the best constant in this way to be the infimum value, then over here on the side of the inequality, this is the best possible constant. That's to say, if I try to replace this constant with c plus epsilon, <coughs> then the inequality is false. So. Given this inequality for which we've put down the best possible constant, one then may ask the question, uh, is equality ever attained in this inequality? Or So uh, an equivalent thing to say is, are there minimizers in this variational problem? And so, so let me say the following. So a function u is attains equality. in the Sobolev inequality star, okay? If and only if, so first this is nothing about Sobolev inequality, just generally what I've said about this variational perspective, this is true if and only if u uh, minimizes this normalized energy, And 
And now something that's specific to the, this particular setting of the Sobolev inequality. This is true if and only if this function u is equal to a, a function which I'll call v0, which, OK, I could write down explicitly for you, but I don't know that it would be instructive. So let me draw then a picture of this, of this function v, v0. It's radially symmetric and decreasing. Uh, it's not compactly supported, but it vanishes polynomially at infinity. Um, and so, OK, so we have equality. I have to sort of have a partial sentence here. If u is equal to this function, or once I tell you that this v0 is an equality case in the Sobolev inequality, we immediately have a few other equality cases that come from the symmetries of this inequality. So for one, uh, above both of the norms that I've placed here are invariant under translations. So immediately, if I know that v0 attains equality, then if I translate this profile, I have another equality case. Um, in the same way, if I multiply this function v0 by 5, then both norms are one homogeneous, and this equality simply gets multiplied by 5 on both sides. So I have this invariance under constant multiples. And the final symmetry of this inequality that's less obvious on just looking at it um, is a dilation symmetry. So this is to say that if I consider uh, the function v0 of lambda x for some positive constant lambda, then both sides of this inequality scale in exactly the same way. In fact, that's, that's where this uh, value of q comes from. And, and for this reason, this scaling under dilations, if you try to replace it with another LP norm, then the inequality is simply false. Uh, but so, so in this way, we have this additional invariant scaling, which corresponds to uh, squeezing or stretching the profile. But so, so let me write the following. This function u attains equality uh, if and only if u is this particular profile or one of its invariant scalings. So by this I mean precisely one of its translations, dilations, or constant multiples. So OK, just a historical note of, of interest. So this result was, was found independently in the same year by Oban and Talenti. So Talenti came from the Italian school of the calculus of variation. So he was just studying this problem because it's interesting from a variational perspective. Oban was, uh, was studying this with a very particular application in mind. And this was to the Yamabe problem in conformal geometry, where sort of the determining what the extremal functions are and this sharp constant play a, a vital role there. But so anyway, let me sort of recast what I've just said about these minimizers on the side of this variational perspective. So let me draw a picture where, OK, in this schematic drawing, I'm going to represent the infinite dimensional space of, of smooth functions decaying at infinity as, as just this one dimensional space. So let this be the space of smooth functions. that vanish at infinity. And I'll go ahead and look at this space modulo invariant scaling. So these same invariant scalings coming from our inequality. So so by this, I simply mean that we identify two functions which are translations of each other, constant multiples, or dilations. So what we know from the Sobolev inequality is, is if here on the other side, I, or on the, the y-axis, I graph the normalized energy. What I know from the Sobolev inequality is that there's this value, c0. Uh, and this is the global minimum of, of the energy. And furthermore, what we've said with this result of, of Oban and Talenti is that if I look at this profile, v0, OK, now it's an equivalence class, then the, this global minimum is achieved at v0 and nowhere else. So the rest of the energy profile, at the moment, I don't know too much what it looks like, but I know 
even if it gets very close to the infimum. Elsewhere, it only achieves it here. OK, so the, the principal uh, type of question that I'm interested in is the following. So this is that of, of quantitative stability. And here I'll phrase it in terms of Sobolev inequality, but the sort of standard setup that we've we have to get ourselves into is to have some inequality. Yes? Sorry. I didn't understand why you moved up the new chicken theory, up the new chicken theory. I mean, why couldn't it be that you just proved? Ah, OK. So, so this is a, a thing to be proven. So it comes from, so the proof that one of these, uh, that this profile is a minimizer, OK, comes from uh, a symmetrization argument where you can say, so first of all, if you're looking for minimizer, okay. Step one, show a minimizer exists. And this in itself is a bit hard because there are some compactness problems. But so there's this concentration compactness machinery of Lyons that allows you to show a minimizer exists. Then there's uh, something called a Polyazego inequality that says, uh, if I take any function I want and I, I symmetrize it, I, I reorganize its level sets so that they're balls, then, uh, then this the energy, this normalized energy, goes down. Maybe it stays the same, but it, it only it cannot go up. Uh, and so then you basically turn yourself into a one-dimensional situation uh, where you're looking for solutions of an ODE. This does not a priori give you uniqueness. There are two. Okay, so so historically, the case P equals two was known much before that uh, the extremals were unique here, and that was on the level of the Euler-Lagrange equation, sort of. If you compute the, the first variation of this functional, it gives you a PDE on all of Rn. And Obata proved, actually, the only critical points are these functionals. Um, when p is not equal to 2, the situation, I would say, was not understood until well later when sort of the equality cases in the Polyazego were well understood. You can only have the, when you symmetrize a function, the energy goes strictly down except for in a certain class of cases that you can classify. But this was actually studied, I mean, more around the 2010 era. So it's not, it's not obvious. OK, so. Um, well, we, we did that well, long answer. <laughs> let me just say extremely briefly. So the main, the main question that I'm interested in is the following. Uh, suppose. Some function u, okay, which is smooth and vanishes at infinity, almost achieves equality. And the inequality, then is it close? Let me put this in quotes because it's not entirely clear how one wants to quantify this. Um, to some invariant scaling of v0. That's to say, is it close to one of these equality cases? So the answer here is okay, yes. Um, so, so, but let me let me go ahead and draw sort of what what this kind of question means in terms of the schematic drawing. Essentially, this establishes some sort of quantitative modulus of convexity, some way that this energy must separate from the global minimum. So, so if you want the, the picture looks like this, you want to prove that you have some modulus of separation, which means that the, the energy cannot actually look like this. It, it cannot go arbitrarily close to the infimum far from the function. In fact, it must separate uh, according to some power uh, of the distance from v naught. So okay, so I guess a final comment in my last 30 seconds. So implicitly in this picture, I've endowed this space with some metric. Uh, if, if you like Sobolev spaces, then the, the metric I've put here is the homogeneous W1P norm. If you don't, it's, it's the strongest metric that makes sense in this picture. Um, and so, okay, so, so there's a conjectured way that this, this should separate, which is like the distance to the alpha, which is where alpha is the maximum between p and 2. Uh, so this, this conjectured bound is known in the case p equals 2. 
uh, and otherwise it's not. So ou outside of that case, the best known result is, is one that gives a, sort of a, a theorem by picture would be, be this, a worse modulus of separation uh, in the case p greater than 2, which is due to Figali and myself. Okay, so, so thanks very much. <laughs>